Okay, well, this is a little bit about Nolan's Cross, but uh, there's something coming up uh, in the uh, supernova part of this presentation that's really cool. But um, this is the sun rising, looking from cone E, the bottom of the cross, towards cone A. So we're looking cone A to the northeast. Now, what I want to do is talk about this uh, misconception about a lot of people think that the spine of the cross is aligned with the summer solstice rising sun at the at the island, and it's not really. You know, it's all about what your definition about when sunrise is. But I know at the island is sunrise is at 56 degrees, um, and and no one's cross stem is 60 degrees. Now, whether they wanted to plan that way, obviously it's uh, you know, above the horizon, about 30, or I'm sorry, three and a half degrees above the horizon there. Uh, on uh, This is actually using the old style. This is before the calendar change of 1582, when they went from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. This is 14, 1450. So this is before uh, the Gregorian calendar change when the summer solstice was actually on June 13th, not June 21st. So um, this is the summer solstice on the island in 1450. And you can see how the sun rises and the sun would go down that stem, but it'd only it'd be about three and a half degrees above the horizon when that occurred. It does not rise exactly on the 60 degree mark. So I did want to just emphasize that to many people who might think that it is aligned, but it's not in my books. But here is after the calendar change. Uh, this is uh, obviously it, it doesn't matter what the calendar says, but um, this is on June 21st, and it's the same. So I mean, we don't control the sun, obviously, but the calendar is what humans create, and it creates different dates. But the sun. It's exactly the same. It doesn't matter what date, but um, you know that that's. I just want to clear that up. Now, this is looking the opposite way down the spine. Now, if you uh, are a big uh, Francis Bacon fan, you might want to look at this. Um, this is before the calendar changed. This is uh, you know before 1582. Now, you're going to notice that uh, January 22nd was Bacon's birthday. Uh, so he was born on January 22nd. Um, the sun actually comes very close to setting at the uh, base along that 240 degree line at the bottom of the cross. It's very close. Now this is again, this is old style. This is something that England, actually England did not even change the calendar until 1756 or so. So um, England was a Protestant country and only the Catholic countries changed the new calendar uh, at 1582. So, but if you think about Bacon being British, he would have used the old style even after 1582. If I had to show it, um, you can see how there's a uh, six degree difference. However, if you were to use the new calendar uh, as it should be after 1582, um, there's a you know, there's a 10 days difference. Now, if you use a new calendar, the sun sets down that 240 very, very close. Now, it's a way with the summer solstice being just above the horizon, then you would think that maybe they wanted, you know, the, the stem or the sun to be just a couple of degrees above the horizon, uh, be significant if Francis Bacon had something to do with the cross. Uh, if he set up the cross, for him, you know, January 22nd along the base of that stem, if the sun sets there, I think that'd be important. But it is very, very close. We can talk about Cygnus too, if you want, Nolan's Cross, sure. Um, here's another myth that maybe I can clear up. Um, a lot of the, uh, some research is that when uh, when Deneb, the tail star of Cygnus, is over the island at Zenith, Zenith is right overhead, the tail star there, they think that 
you know, it points the same direction 240 as Nolan's Cross, but it doesn't. It actually points about 225 degrees. Um, that is due southwest. And when you look up, you know, what degree bearing is southwest, it comes up at 225, and that's dead southwest. So, but there is, could be some kind of significance. Um, you can see the Milky Way there too. That's pretty cool uh, how that um, does when, uh, when, you know, the tail star of Cygnus is over the island. And it actually doesn't, Deneb doesn't reach the zenith until about 1770 or 17, somewhere around there. Um, it actually, by my calculations, it doesn't reach true zenith until about that time and it's kind of weird how it's just before the american revolution so um it does that it hangs around uh for about 30 years and then you know it, it moves off but yeah that's would have been the prime time for the nav to be exactly over the island now this is the way i like to see sickness this is how i view the importance of sickness at the island from the Welling Triangle, Cygnus sets to the northwest. Now you can see from this picture how Cygnus sets and makes a cross on the horizon right over Nolan's Cross. And if you you know you're thinking about the Tree of Life, that line passes through Dath, Dath uh, on the Tree of Life. It's the empty space they call uh, on the Tree of Life. So. Um, you know, the thing is also, this is, you know, Cygnus has an asterism called the Northern Cross. And it is Christ, it is the crucifixion. So if you see that, it does look like the crucifixion to me um, as a cross with Christ on it. It makes sense that death, which is the empty space and has associated with death, have significance in that setting. And here it is, the Great Cross um, as Cygnus right here. So you can see how it sets perfectly to represent the crucifixion in um, as Cygnus sets right over Nolan's cross. So you have a cross over a cross. So that's important. Um, yeah, we can we can talk about supernova. Might as well. These are the supernovas that, um, you know, many of you might know that the Rosicrucian thought the supernovas of uh, Insignus and Kepler's supernova in Ophiuchus were very important to them. Uh, they believe that the supernovas gave off energy uh, that brought about the Age of Enlightenment. They had an effect on, uh, on people to, uh, nor made them smarter for some reason and made them enlightened. So uh, the supernova are very, very important to the Rosicrucian. Now, you're going to see something in there. You don't see Cygnus. You don't see the, the supernova in Cygnus because it's not really a true supernova. It's called a permanent supernova, and it's P. Cygni, but it comes and goes. They thought it was a real supernova at the time because it hung on for maybe six or seven years. But, um, or maybe longer than that, but it, it fades, it comes and goes. So they thought it was a true supernova, but it, it's, it's not characterized, it's not classified as a supernova. Now, to me, one of the, the uh, go back to that one. Um, the, the two supernova that I believe that would be super important to the Rosicrucian was. The one in 1572, Cassiopeia, um, that's Tycho's, uh, that was very bright. That was a minus four magnitude. The more minus you are, uh, the better. Um, so that was very bright. And then obviously Kepler's supernova, which is a very big supernova in 1604, just before the manifestos of the Rosicrucian came out, uh, that would have been also very popular to them. And the next thing I would like to see, show is how Kepler's supernova there, and it shows in the right leg of Ophiuchus. Um, the reason they found the supernova, they didn't expect it, they can't predict it, 
but they were looking at the junction conjunction of three planets. You can see them there, Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn. That was the target for why they were looking in that area at that time in 1604. And again, look at the day. That's the brightest time for Kepler's supernova is October 8th, 108 again. Very strange, right? So maybe that 108 is important. I don't know. So anyways, they had a conjunction there, and all of a sudden, this supernova pops up. Boom. Okay? Now, with Nolan's Cross, though, go to the next slide. You're not going to believe it, but that supernova sets at 240. So if you went from cone A down the stem to cone E, Kepler's supernova sets exactly down the stem of the cross. So that's hugely important, I would think. If the Rosicrucian had something to do with the Nolan's Cross, I think that would be probably pretty important to them. Go to the next slide. Now, you're going to notice that uh, Cygnus is up there, and it's pointing down towards Kepler's supernova. Go ahead and hit the line. There you go. So here we have Cygnus in the sky pointing directly at Kepler's supernova, setting down Nolan's cross, which people think is actually a representation of Cygnus. You have a cross in the sky pointing, and then you have a cross on the earth pointing to the same direction, as above, so below. What a perfect example of that would be if that was intended. So two crosses pointing at Kepler's supernova as they set at 240. That's pretty astonishing, really. Now, if you really want to go further, I wish that was just it, but the, the supernova in Cassiopeia through Cygnus, where Cygnus uh, P. Cygni was, the permanent supernova in the breast of Cygnus, and Kepler's supernova all form a straight line following the stem of Cygnus in the sky. So actually, if you want to think about it, it's a direct line through Cygnus pointing as Kepler's supernova sets, and you have Nolan's cross pointing in that same exact direction at the same time. 